Alejandro Villanueva being the imposing 6 foot 9, 300 and plus pound offensive tackle he is has some massive natural advantages of being an offensive lineman and he uses them as a blocker. However, there are some very serious limitations not only to his athleticism, but also his technique. In this video, we'll be going over those limitations. Our right, second game of the season versus the, versus the Giants. Pittsburgh Steelers are going to go against the Giants. Non-conference, non-divisional opponent. We're going to just look at, since they're relatively fresh in the season, to see how things play out. So in this play, the Steelers are going to come out in a formation that is a bit unorthodox. And we can look at end zone view even more to understand how and why this is so unorthodox. But I can tell already that their alignment is showing some type of a blitz or some type of stunt. Something that is well outside of the norm. Receivers are going to come out in a one tight end, three receiver set. With the running back to the left, offensive left. The Giants are going to come out and officially four down linemen, but this corner or nickel player is playing up pretty close. You have one linebacker here, and we're going to just look at, you see safety, safety. This is actually a safety as well. That's Landon, or not Landon Collins. This is a corner, I believe. Let's take a look at it from the end zone view and see how it's so odd. So, everybody's getting set. I mean, this is, this to me screams of some type of funky blitz or some type of something. If I'm not mistaken, this guy is actually normally an inside linebacker of some sort. And this guy is definitely their middle linebacker. Defensive back, defensive back, defensive back, edge player. And if you look up front, you have this guy kind of in a nine. He's like in a four slash four I. He's in like a one and he is in a six. I mean, and you have absolutely, you have nobody standing over the left side offensive left a gap or b gap and you have one dude in the c gap and somebody in the d gap but these gaps are completely unprotected that's that screams of blitz all right so if we watch how this plays out eventually he walks down so this is their actual middle linebacker walking down he steps outside even further into a nine and he's just manned up. As the play develops, he comes screaming off the edge. And it only end up rushing four people. But when you see it look like that, normally you'd be calling slide protections and be trying to do a bunch of different other things. So at this point, if he's coming so far off the edge, all Alejandro Villanueva has to do, maintain inside leverage, just keep the keep the quarterback's feet clean, the quarterback ends up dropping back a little bit, easy day this is not a this is not inherently a problem although he is causing some problems up here he is definitely getting beat inside and he's fighting like hell over here i mean there's some issues but this right here is an issue he gets beat inside this is the defender's arm not alejandro beating the waivers and what's going to end up happening is that he gets walked back into the quarterback's lap. I mean, I don't, there's not very much a worse position you can be in outside of watching this dude just tee off on your quarterback. This is, this is objectively bad. Fortunately, Ben Roethlisberger being an experienced veteran and a very, depending on how you, who you ask, elite quarterback, he gets the ball off in time ends up being a catch. So, as he pushes him back, he makes the catch. But this is bad by Alejandro Villanueva. The reason why it's bad is because it's bad technique. It's bad position. Sure, he can give ground, he can give ground, 
but I would not have opened up the gate so much at this point. But the reason why he opened up the, the gate is if you really watch his hips, he was trying to throw his one arm stab right here, and he missed. That's what happened. And when he missed, he was he had already given up inside leverage. He hadn't already utilized his outside arm, so now he's fighting outside in instead of inside out. Inside out gives you all the control. And he lost leverage, and that's why he gets beat. Getting beat on a pass rush, especially the outside, is not unheard of. Sometimes you're going against really, really incredible football players. Other times, you beat yourself. This is one of those times that Alejandro Villanueva straight up just beat himself. And it's a shame because being six foot nine and having all the all of God's gifts in your advantage, your ability to gain weight, keep it on, to be somewhat athletic, to be have the ridiculous wingspan. On paper, this dude should be the best tackle in all of football. But on film, this is not unheard of. Matter of fact, if you really watch this film, as we do throughout this video, and you probably go back even further, you see more and more issues exactly like this. And it's not a, and it's never a matter of desire or will. It's a matter of just base fundamentals. You hate to see it. So if you look at the Giants, overall, you have a four-man front, two linebackers. I believe this is a linebacker and this is a linebacker. And I think this is a nickel. You have a safety, safety, corner, corner. But we'll be able to tell the personnel better, but either way it goes, it's a four-man front. The Steelers are going to come out in their favorite tight end left, running back right, three receiver set. As you can see, if you look in the box, this gentleman right here is actually a nickel. This is a actual linebacker. There you go. And the other linebacker is off the screen in this case, but he is playing an outside nine, outside of the tight end. He's playing a three, outside of the guard. He is playing a, I would say is a four eye, four eye or a three. I call him a four eye because he's kind of wide. He is definitely coming from a nine. He is wide as wide as all hell. There's some things to really know in this play. So there's going to be a run. Snaps the ball. Fakes this sweep motion. And there's going to be a double pull. Guard and center are going to both pull. in this double counter motion. So the biggest thing about counters and powers and anything that you have pullers, this front side block is massively critical. Getting movement or not getting beat, I should say, on this block is very important for this play's overall development because if you get knocked backwards you're not only getting in the way of the ball carrier you're getting in the way of your pullers and your pullers are pulling up to do some rather important jobs in the context of the play you see a tight end working the front side linebacker one of these dudes is pulling to kick out one of these dudes is pulling to work to the other linebacker and if blocked correctly you have a hat for a hat one two three four Giants defenders, one, two, three, four Steelers football players. Hat for a hat across the board. So the only person who can really get him at this point would be the safeties. Or at least that's how it should work. But as the play develops, guess who is getting beat back? Alejandro Villanueva. Now getting beat back, like I just told you, is very, very bad. And again, you're only squeezing this hole. He was originally like right here and he got pushed back well like a lot closer to the numbers than he should have and if he hadn't got pushed back so far the running back probably would have cut cut inside sooner and hit this seam a lot sooner because actually if you look at the way this play ends up developing he's not gonna make the play he's not gonna make the play of James Connors in the open field and this guy, if he can get a good angle, can block the safety. So this play could potentially score, or at the very least get a pretty massive game. But a good chunk of the reason why that didn't happen, and there, there are good reasons across the board and technical reasons across the board that it didn't happen, 
for example, this kick out block didn't exactly work out very well. The fact that he was getting pushed back and this hole is getting ever and ever smaller is a significant problem. This is this is unforgivable. You cannot you cannot be stood straight up when you're the down blocking player on the front side of a run. And the fact that he got stood up on the front side of a run is indicative of how he blocks overall. He plays tall, he plays high, he doesn't bend his knees very well. And if he gets beat inside, that's it. And to be fair, if anybody gets beat inside, that's it for them. But he gets beat inside because of how he comes off the ball, in addition to the fact that he is monumentally tall. The Steelers played against the Broncos, Roosevelt in the season. You had, I want to say this play was sometime around the second quarter. There was no like stun or blitz going on, but what is going to happen is there's going to be just a run to the right. It's going to be a power, sorry. And um, Sanders is going to block back. And all the left tackle has to do in this case really is just kind of take away the inside. Make sure like this guy doesn't come out the back of this block and chase down the play or that this guy just screams off the edge and makes the play or you know even worse he comes in on blitz that's that's what he's there for he's just making sure it doesn't go bad so runs the ball and as we can see this is this is this is bad now I've seen it coached a couple of different ways. I've seen it explained a couple of different ways. The reality is, no matter what, as you, as if you're this backside tackle on a power play, you you want to step inside. You 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 want to step inside because what you're going to want to do is take away this any take away any possibility of any nonsense. Because if you don't see this dude decide to come out the back and stunt, I mean. You, you, your body's in the position to just be there and just take it and then you could react on the run and if he decides late he wants to blitz then you're there for that too again but just shuffling because you're more worried about the defensive end to me is lazy and naive more than it is anything and then add insult to injury footwork atrocious I mean Everything about his footwork is atrocious. His body position, stand straight up. His feet are wide, but his hands are down. He's trying to keep his head on the right side. Fails. And all, all at the end of the day, ends up being an inconsequential block. That attitude and that mentality is, is problematic for any line. Because you would, if you're on the field, your block matters. You're, you are a person on the field. A scheme or a play can maybe write you off, or a coach can write you off, but that doesn't make you as a blocker on the field irrelevant. And if you do your job the right way, you can make yourself very relevant. Because maybe this time he sees, okay, front side didn't work out very well, especially in this look, but I know that this guy is deciding to, he's going to block and he's going to try to create a lane if he wants if you want to try to cut back he would have some type of cutback lane and if you were and if he was doing his job if any one of these people really do their job the right way you're always going to create an opportunity for guys like this to make a play you know that he's not just some run of the mill running back he's he's in the pros like that's that is an achievement in itself so the fact that he's there doesn't mean he's categorically good enough to get, get the job done all, he, all you need to do is do your job, but I mean, standing straight up, that's, that's just not it, man. So as I mentioned earlier about never giving up on the backside of run, this is, uh, this is the reason why. So you're more or less going to get the same look as the power that the Steelers ran earlier. Uh, Steelers are going to call in on the tight end he's going to set up here and they're going to just run their power concept they're going to block down block over and blocking these for these linebackers tight end is going to block he's going to pull K 
kick out and all he's gonna do is try to seal the backside but instead of doing what James Conner did last time where he's trying to stay outside he's gonna try to cut it back and see what he can get now let's watch the left tackle tight end comes in this time Alejandro Villanueva actually does get good inside leverage so this right here is smart in the sense that he's trying to maintain leverage bad in the sense of everything else I've ever said about him at this point better knee bend than he has had his elbows are pointed I don't like that um, I mean he's head to head with him I mean, I'm not saying you, to get, you, can you can get lower than the guy but extend or drive or do something he doesn't really do that and as watch this play develops sure enough there is our protagonist basically being the cutback lane for a, run, a running back trying to make something out of this play. Now I don't pin that play on Alejandro Villanueva but that really is just making the point that I made earlier that if this dude like if you all you can do is just give these guys a chance give them a chance and they got to do the rest. Bills are going to come out, they're nickel personnel, there ends up being a blitz from the nickel corner, Still are going to come out in their tight end left, through receiver set, Bills are going to have head up six, a four eye, a one, and more of a wide nine, and given where he's walked up, it's rational to assume some type of situation like this across the front two linebackers set this over here is an actual corner but the biggest thing is there's a pass set by our protagonist Mr. Villanueva and he takes a bad pass set now this is a, a big point to really pay attention to because at this juncture he does have inside leverage on the pass bro. His base is entirely too wide. He is standing straight up. Basically, his hands are not really ready to go. At the end of the day, his inside shoulder is on this side of this man's body. So that is otherwise in a decent position for now. But as the play develops, he gets beat inside. So this happens to the best of us. And I'm not going to say that this is necessarily a bad block or a bad pickup. General rule, you give ground to the outside, you give nothing to the inside, he should be pushing him down the line. But the only problem is, like that I've always had with Mr. Villanueva, is his fundamentals. Had he had gotten, gotten down more and was in a better position to go either direction, this way or this way, it wouldn't have been that big of an issue, but because he was standing straight up with his feet so wide apart, when this inside move did happen, he ends up getting ground to the inside. And that's, that's bad. As you can clearly see, the quarterback is in duress. Now, sure, the rest of the Steelers offense line isn't exactly doing all that great. I mean, what the hell is this? But it doesn't change the fact that the left tackle literally coming across your face and trying to basically tackle this man is a result of very bad fundamentals and that's what this is so full disclosure like I said getting beat on the pass rush isn't isn't unheard of and it's not the most egregious example of getting beat on the inside pass rush I've ever seen from anyone including Mr. Villanueva but this is still a point of concern because of the way it happened this is going to be a pass play and Alejandro Villanueva doesn't exactly take a very good pass set and ends up actually getting walked back this is not something that hasn't been seen before and what he ends up doing is it's just bad just bad fundamentals so first to really get some more context on the play this is actually a two linebacker set but they're both man to man and they're over middle of the field looks pretty open right here but they do have four down linemen this is nickel personnel because the Steelers 
actually it might be dime personnel we'll actually see what the defensive personnel looks like from the end zone view but you have three receivers over here this is a tight end you have another receiver here this is five wide formation so definite pass and you have one high safety for the bills looking to the right side of the screen this is actually running back so personnel wise this is one running back three receivers and one tight end but in terms of formation it's it's by wide look a lot of times people were in like bubble screens or something like that kind of like a artificial sweep just out of a pass information this right here is a linebacker manned up over the tight end this is the other linebacker shadowing the running back here safety i believe he's a safety as well and he might be a safety or a corner i don't remember what exact position normally plays um, throughout this game but up front obvious pass everybody's just in the pass stance nine nine four i four i mean this is they're one million percent expecting something just to pass so that's how they're going to block that's how they're going to rush it so watch the play develop now snap the ball this is some decent practicality by the left tackle, at least up to this point. The fact that he didn't stab immediately, or at least as he did, and has his hands down here is already kind of a point of concern to me. I don't agree with that at all. The guard's getting beat, good lord. Having this position, having inside leverage is not bad. Now, based on the way I've seen Alejandro be in the way of a block up to this point, it looks like right about here he was trying to gear up this arm and do his one arm hombre de dios stab but it doesn't work out very well because this defensive end gets leverage and just starts pushing him up and goddamn i mean ooh we this is this is not good this is just this is not good, and I'm, there's no nice way of putting that. It's it's just bad, because that arm of God, that one arm stab that he's six foot nine uses to an advantage. It works great until it doesn't, and this is one of those times it just doesn't. Best believe people have watched film on this for years, and there's lots of evidence of him doing that. Let just this season alone, and you could probably go back through the rest of his career and see him do it throughout the year. I don't, I can't, this is just an objectively bad position to be in. Not only, are, not only are you six foot nine standing straight up normally, maybe playing at six foot six, but now you're getting even raised. So now he's probably closer to seven feet tall, getting pushed up and back into his quarterback's lap with a nice little hypotenuse here. Good Lord. It's just bad. This is just bad, bad everything. Because he's trying to get away with doing his favorite thing and he gets exposed, completely exposed. And again, the only reason why I'd bring this up is specifically with this game is because the Bills are an opponent that they are subject to see during the regular season and the postseason. Now, I haven't seen what the Ravens' schedules are going to look like. I don't really pay attention to football schedules until... This gets close to the season, but the bottom line is this is one of the more prominent defenses in the National Football League as of today. And this is the defense, this is a team that has a defense that will potentially more than likely be seen in the postseason this coming season. And if this is how he's playing toward the end of the regular season against a very prominent defense, and prominent defenses that may not have the most like super duper headliner multiple like leading the league in sacks type of players but have good enough players that understand technique fundamental and just how to get leverage and how to out leverage somebody who has natural size leverage over you i mean good lord this is this que malo as they would say in Spanish. Good Christ Almighty.
This is just bad. This is also from the Broncos Steelers game, um, relatively early in the season. This is uh, later in the first quarter. This is more. This play is really good for a couple of things. One, it does expose one of the limits of Alejandro Villanueva's ability as a pass blocker, and two, it also shows you a couple of things about defensive stunts and things to look for. So, if you look at the Broncos, they're going to run what was what is called a double twist, all right. And depending on who your coach is, and what they'll call this Texas, you know, Texas meaning tackle and end exchange or tex, right? But really what's going to happen is he's going to come in and he's going to like pick the tackle, get him to come inside and this man's going to come around. Same thing over here. He's going to come in, pick, and then he's going to come around, try to make the play. What this does is it does disrupt normal pass rushes or pass blocks and blast blocking schemes. But the way you counter it, of course, you be disciplined. So the way you, what you would normally do, depending on how they call their pass protection, a lot of teams will might identify the mic or they might identify the strong side or what have you. So they'll just say if, if James Conner here was not going into the route and he was going to be the up back blocking, Okay, so strong side would be left side, so then the de then the offensive line is responsible for anything on the right. Okay, well, offensive line is therefore responsible for him, responsible for him, if he blitzes him and first level. So front side linebacker or anything off the edge is James Conner's responsibility. That's theoretically how a lot of blocking schemes work. It's not an absolute. They could just keep Aaron Ebron and end the play as well, do something similar, all right? But that's normally how it works. And the way that would work is, okay, you set out to your person, well, the tackle doesn't want to overset anyway, just maintain inside leverage. He sees his guys coming in and he just gets close and he feels his guy coming out. Though it does take some practice, some timing, but usually as a lineman, you want to yell switch or something something to let the guard tackle guard tackle or guard center whoever be aware that hey we are changing responsibilities this guy is no longer coming my outside he is coming to you he is coming to be that coming outside i need to take him and that's that's logically how that will work all right now what you're about to see though the Steelers do something a little bit different. Um, I think that's partially just their blocking scene. But you're going to see some real deal limits with Alejandro Villanueva as far as a pass blocker goes. So he's going to take his set. Before we really go into it further, as always, when you get up to the line of scrimmage, you always want to just do your normal count, figure out where everybody is. You got a three technique. This is definitely a one. Uh, he is on the inside shoulder of the guard. This is definitely a tighter than normal five, or tighter than normal nine, but he's still a nine. He's still a nine, and he's leaning like he's leaning like he's going to do something. Sometimes you can tell a linebacker's blitzing based on their stance. If they have their weight forward, if they have their feet forward, or what have you. Sometimes the ones who are faking are just really good at disguising which way they're going in either way, so you just have to be ready. This three technique is really more of a four eye. And this guy is more of a, almost a two. So that's that's a sign of something's up. Something is afoot. So as we watch this play develop, you can see the defensive lineman, he's gonna engage here and he's ultimately gonna wrap around here. Original three technique, he's gonna come straight to the, the tackle. Now he actually ends up engaging with the tight end, which, good defensive practice knock him off his route but he's gonna actually rush inside but really looking at the left tackle he gets completely washed I mean this is this is unforgivable and he completely oversets so and when I say it's unforgivable it's unforgivable in the sense that it's something that you do need to prepare for if they come wide the entire game 
They're not going to come wide the entire game. There's no way they can come wide the entire game. If they do, they're going to set themselves up for counters, screens, you na reverses, you name it. If this guy is going to run like a bat out of hell upfield every single play, what is what in the world is going to stop your coach from simply calling? Oops, not trying to do with that. What is going to stop your coach from calling a a counter with this running back, where he's going to take the ball, he's going to get the he's going to get run upfield and get ear hold from all the way to the sideline. You're going to just completely crash down and work up this linebacker. You might have Eric Ebron pulling up for the linebacker or some combination of the other. What is to stop your coach from doing that the entire game if that's how both of these ends are going to play? What's to stop? And the, only re and the reason why I'd be a little bit more critical, a little more hard on him, is because he has the real deal playing experience to know better. So for him to overset this way, although I understand it, he is coming from a wide nine and he has been doing it in this point up the entire game, it doesn't justify oversetting him that hard. But okay, fine, fine. You overset, it happens to the best of us, not a problem. Take no prisoner, take no quarter. There should be no ground seated inside, none. He, you need to beat him inside because the general rule of pass blocking you you can give ground all day to the outside you can go back you can bow out bend around whatever you could be faced the complete other direction but inside you give up nothing we give up absolutely nothing take no prisoners take no quarter negative but that's not what Alejandro being the waiver does instead he sees he's getting beat inside and rather than really recognizing the stunt, he just sees he got beat. And to me that this is everything about this is really, really damning about him. And this is probably the most damning characteristic because this isn't a lack of football knowledge and lack of football experience. These are things that you can always work on. This is watching film and learning how to time. It. This is lack of fundamentals. And this is highly problematic. People who are learning to play offensive line don't make this mistake this egregious this often. And he is at this point a going into his set. This is his seventh season playing as a pro. Mind you, he's been a pro bowler of his total seven years, three of those seasons. And here he is getting completely mollywhopped inside. And the guy didn't even beat him. He just ran, outran him. He forced him to overset, and then he just beat him inside. He got he gets bailed out by James Conner, who's the up back, and the fact that this is a stunt, and the guard is trying to like at least piece him up because he also got beat too. So now the entire left side of the line essentially gets beat, and they're gonna get away with one. But again, it's result of bad fundamentals, very bad fundamentals. And then if you watch even further how the play develops, I mean, he, he just, he never even, he never even appears to get up and tries to get number 96 coming around the edge scot-free on his quarterback and almost gives up a pick. I mean, come on, man. Like, and the guard at least is, is fighting for it, trying to get out, but he can't because he's all tied up with him and he's committed and just trying to push him wherever he can because he just got beat really 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 bad on national television even though nobody was in the stadium like dude we all saw this like we saw you get beat this really happened I mean I'm not trying to be whatever but like you can you he could he could have recovered in my mind had he have gotten to this point and realized that it was a stunt if he had gotten to this point try to square up and realize oh snap he's coming outside just push him into his guard and then just fight with this dude wherever instead he just sticks with number 97 coming across the middle and almost causes the quarterback to throw a pick now the quarterback's decision and his throw is not directly a result of Alejandro being waiver but 
It shouldn't have gone in this bag. It just shouldn't. It was completely a blue. Context in this play. Steelers are playing the Bengals. Second matchup of this season. Uh, this is later in the third quarter. Steelers are close to the, close to the goal line, third and seven. What you're going to see is some bad pass protection by left tackle Alejandro Villanueva specifically. Now, for Bengals are coming out of their normal four down lineman look. This time they have a linebacker walked up. He's actually going to be on a blitz. This is a regular linebacker. This is their nickel personnel. Corner, corner. Safety's not rolled down this time. And this is their Steelers' preferred one tight end, three receiver set with one running back. So this guy walks up and actually comes in on a blitz. In front you have kind of a wide five, something they've been doing much of the game. You have definitely a one technique, and he's a pretty tight one technique. You could argue that this guy is a four eye right here. You could also you could also make the argument that he's a three. I would say he's definitely a four eye, but maybe it's just camera angle, maybe it's just the way he's tilted. And this guy is definitely a nine because he's outside shoulder of the tight end here. This linebacker is stacked over the tight end. Safeties are split. So if we take a look at the left tackles, pass protection. blocking backside he's blocking the end he's blocking front side he's blocking here so everybody's everybody's employed but front side they're all man-to-man -man. well if you're looking at the left tackle man-to-man -man, his man gets under him and he begins to push him back this is bad this is really bad because as you can clearly see Number one, that is a lot of man to be getting pushed straight back. Number two, he gets in the way of his up back who's supposed to be picking up a blitzing linebacker. That's just, you can't have that. You cannot have a situation like this. There's, that's just bad. And again, it happens to the best of us. I mean, every once in a while, we just get beat. And it's, it is what it is. The only reason why I'm even being critical of him on this play, it's a technique reasons. I'm not saying you should have necessarily expected a bull rush, but had you sat down a little bit more, had you have bent more at the knee instead of at the waist, had you have extended and shot your hands inside more, had you have really got your feet under you solid, you wouldn't have gotten walked back. But because his technique, his base fundamentals were already flawed from jump, it set him up for this defeat. And it set a quarterback up in a position to where now he's looking at the business end of getting hit in the face by a rushing lineman. Sure, gets the ball out. That's not the point. It's not the point that, oh, the quarterback got the ball. The point is, you're, you are forcing the issue. At this point, you are artificially making him have to choose to get rid of it. No matter who it is, because if you can clearly see, middle of the field is going to end up being open. One of these two people can catch the ball. And this man is a decent enough quarterback, if given the half a second that it really needs to just get your feet under him, that the half a second you can buy by getting your feet under you and not getting walked back like that, I mean, it could be the difference between touchdown. Again, we all get beat. Offensive linemen get beat all the time. Sometimes you're going to get some really, really good, really, really stout bull rushers. Sometimes it's hard to get leverage on people because they come, because they come out how they come off the ball. Sometimes it's hard to really get your hands inside of players because of the way they play and the way they hand fight. That's not really what I'm critiquing. What I'm critiquing is the fact that he, his fundamentals never set him up in the first place. And that is a massive red flag and a massive concern. Defense is, the rest of the defense is doing. Um, they're really not doing anything far outside of what they've been doing up to this point. This is the AFC Divisional Wild Card game between the Browns and the Steelers. Right here, you have a what looks like an obvious kind of passing uh, pass rush situation by the Browns defense. Steelers have three receivers set. That they like to run all the time. You have 97 here coming out of nine. You have Adrian Claiborne also coming from a nine. You have a four eye right here on the inside of 
Alejandro Villanueva. And you have a one technique. He's a genuine one technique on the inside shade of the guard. Linebackers are somewhat deep. And the reason why this play, I chose this play to really look at is we're going to see the, kind of the limits of Alejandro Villanueva's favorite move. So as a snap of the ball, he takes a set and he's going to come out and kick out. Now, he does maintain decent inside leverage up to a point, but this is the other danger of dealing with very wide techniques like this because they know that they're coming from such a wide place. They're really trying to get this action as much as possible. Now, if you look at the right tackle, he doesn't turn as much and he does maintain decent inside leverage, but as you can kind of see right here, he's looking to step hard inside. For the left tackle though, he is turning the gate a bit soon, which only primes himself to get beat on an inside move, which is almost what happens, but he still maintains inside leverage. And as he tries to actually go for his favorite move, Adrian Claiborne decides at the last second to step inside. Now this is also a very small example and not the most egregious, but as you can see right here, right here, left tackle has definitely tried to do his favorite hombre de Dios, the good old arm of God move. And it works for a second until he decides that he's going to just try to rush inside. Now, there's a lot of conversations to be had about specifically this player throughout the course of his career and what he's accomplished as a rusher. But I think that at the very least, he is a disruptor. And the way he beats the inside move, he continues to rush up field and actually gets under him and gets leverage and gets right his hand his inside hand right here and then w tries to work back inside at the last second which i would call pretty pretty dang football intelligent and it works out in favor of the defensive end now, the quarterback gets the ball away so you can say it's kind of a moot point although if you look at the right guard he is definitely getting beat inside good lord almighty but specifically with the left tackle the reason why this move as good as it is when it works there are some real deal dangers to it and we're dealing with a, a rusher someone with as much experience as Adrian Claiborne or even Bradley Chubb or someone who is just a very experienced pass rusher including his former teammate now TJ Watt and other people that they're going to be bringing in to fill that role you're looking at someone who understands football, who understands defense, who understands how to just get leverage and how to beat this, this specific move. And I'm not saying using one arm is inherently bad if you have the athletic ability to do it. The fact that he can do it and he has such a ridiculous wingspan and can main, maintain leverage, I mean, might as well use it if you can do it. However, the danger is he is off balance because if you can see his feet, his feet are somewhat in the athletic position, but his uh, outside foot is on is not on the ground in this moment, at this point. His chest is leaning over his foot. As you can see, there is a differential between these two points, and that is not good. There should not be such a differential at all. And he is and just the fact that he's leaning forward not bending at the knee but he is bending at the waist it does set him up to get beat and like i said very small example relatively minute in the grand scheme of his overall blocking technique but this is not good and this is one small thing that again can be very problematic should he not get the timing right on this and if somebody beats him it can be pretty bad